Welcome to Cage Minds, Michael Frankel with Chris Brown. If you didn't get enough of him from today's press conference, we got <laughs> Breezy <laughs> live in studio. <laughs> what has this fight cap been like? Uh, this fight cap wasn't too, um, wasn't too off, off of what normally I do, I don't know. The same old, same old to me. I took two weeks off, um, after the last fight because of the arm, but then right back in it. Didn't really take, um, I think the first day I came back, I didn't want to spar too hard in my head. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to take it easy, and then I ended up sparring with Bavon. <laughs> Okay, that's not taking it easy, one, <laughs> no, two, no. so how many weeks were you back in the gym to get ready for this one if you took two weeks off? Mm, two weeks? Two weeks of sparring? Two weeks of sparring? Mm -hmm. So what do you do in those two weeks? It's just kind of get back to that point where you were before the V3 Really didn't, didn't lose anything because, um, well, actually two weeks of sparring, but I was already hitting mitts with Wink. Oh, okay, so yeah. you were just not getting hit. Yeah, I was just wasn't getting hit, yeah, I was active, I was hitting mitts and running. Are you getting used to these opponent finding troubles? Three, oh, four, or five I'm, names coming I'm up. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. This fight, with at least four or five dudes pulled out, like said, "Oh, I'm gonna fight." Then pulled out. Oh, I'm gonna fight. Pull out. Like we found an opponent yesterday. <laughs> you found, then didn't you have one like two days before that? Yeah, exactly. You were Sunday, I had an opponent um, from Houston that I was supposed to fight at 170. Uh, Wayne called me on Sunday and told me, yeah, we got it. I was like, all right, cool. So I started preparing. I had me a nice little dinner because I was expecting to have to fight at 170. So I was like, oh, I can eat. I'm like, I'm good. And then next day I'm at, um, I get a call. Wayne calls me and say, hey, and guy pulled out. I was like, what? <laughs> so now how big of a difference is five pounds? Because now the fight is 164. So with that plus one, 65, 65 yeah. is your max. <laughs> Instead of 70 or 71, you were thinking. Yeah. How it's, big is five, six uh, pounds? It's not that big a difference. Like going back down to 60, would have, um, I would have had to drag. I could have done it, but safer, not less of strain on my body. Just go to 65. Like, oh, I still got to cut, but rather 10 pounds and 15 pounds. Yeah, he, we, got, we found somebody to do it. Hey. Warren Stewart, he's going to be the guy you're fighting. Do you run up and hug him? Do you just thank I know, him I almost? Know, right? hey, like, this was so hard to find somebody. Really that, like, That's how I always feel at the end of the day whenever I get fights because you know I go through probably like average in like five people a fight. So it's like I'm always wanting to just hug people. That's why I always be smiling. I'm always happy because... Like, Someone actually, you know, stepped up. Uh, and no disrespect to him, but with this many days left before the fight, do you Google his name? Do you look him up? Or do you just go out Wink's there and be... Him up. Oh, okay, so obviously. Wink's, look, Wink's up long found him, bro. <laughs> him and, or him and uh, uh, Deanna, so... And I do not envy her job lately. Yeah, oh, she's working. She, she does a hell of a job. I know that for sure. Not she to mention works. also having to pull a rabbit out of the hat to find Alex Sosa for, to fight Henry Barahona. Yeah. Another situation that... <laughs> fight fighting is crazy. Or something like... Did I find out 175? Yeah, 175. And I believe, you know, Henry who has... This will be his fifth fight fighting a guy who I think we saw has about 21 fights. So something like yours. Three fights to a guy with 37 fights. Yeah. Is That's it fun like, fighting at least somebody that... I like it, though. 37 fights, you know he's going to show up, and, and you know he likes to fight. Yeah, he's like, hey, that's what I want to do. Like, all these people with low records are scared. <laughs> Nobody wants to ruin their record. And as soon as, like, you know, I've had guys agree to fight, and their managers pull them out, so... <laughs> do you think people are, are starting to try to protect records a little bit in MMA, oh, where they yeah, have that feeling of boxing? Always. Always. Everybody's trying to start take the easy route. And then they take all these easy fights, and then when they fight somebody that's really with the shit, they, they're looking crazy because they get beat up, and they don't know what to do with themselves. Like, there's a reason you take hard fights. You can't take easy fights. Like, how are you pushing yourself? And we know you've pushed yourself a lot in training. How, in the two weeks of sparring that you've had since the last fight, do you make that change that you need to make of calming down when you get somebody hurt, not getting too excited? Uh, just mentally. Just, I think it'll just be able to, because I calmed down the rest of the fight <laughs> after it already happened, so uh, 
I think it'll just be mentally just being in there, just staying calm, because I can do it once I... It usually takes a round <laughs> before I calm down. <laughs> You think it'll also serve as a little bit of reminder next time you're about to jump in your Oh, okay, yeah, my yeah, arm yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, all, yeah. Right, all right, all right. I want right. to keep this arm for the rest of the fight, so let's do <laughs> let's do something else here. But uh, yeah, you know, just being more cautious about just taking my time because um, I rush. I know I get all so excited to finally fight because it usually takes six months to find a fight. But you know, I'm finally fighting within a month of each other. Back to back, pretty yeah, close. So that's back to back for me. And like every other fight has been six months, six months, six months. So uh, I'm excited to just be able to put it right back into you know use. So I'll be able to learn because I just did it. <laughs> Do you feel like you'll be able to feel momentum to be able to kind of have that? You've been undefeated, but to get that feeling of some momentum from having consecutive fights, whereas before it was. One, yeah, because I've been one. counting amateurs. I've rolled off ten fights in a row, so and doing everything: boxing, kickboxing, MMA. Ran off ten wins, so um, it was an adjustment. I know I definitely like was in my feelings a little bit, but you know, fight could have gone either way. Uh, but you know, just not did get too down on it because I, you know, what if I could just get back on the horse, get back on it. Like, it is what it is, you know. How many times have you judges. watched that fight? I haven't even seen it. You really haven't watched it? I really haven't seen it. Just the, <laughs> the, just the clip. <laughs> just the clip that you share. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing that I've seen of the fight, I swear. <laughs> so, seen it in my head plenty of times. And you just keep reliving it? Oh, I was, I've played it millions of times in my head. I know what I could have done to seal it, um, put put no doubts in their minds, but, um, you know, I know there's things I could have done, and I see everything that was going on, it was just the effect of not having the left arm was like, all right, it's really messed up, oh, but I got to maintain, he's coming, I was like, oh, I'm just tired from gassing out, from getting out of it, so I'm like, all right, his punches weren't doing any damage, there was like just little pitter pats, it was just like annoying me, so I was like, all right, let me get some energy, all right, boom, let me attack, let me attack, I only had one arm, so... <laughs> I was still just landing that right. <laughs> Have you thought of for the future, maybe incorporating in your training some strange drills where if I did have a broken foot, what if I, I do that? Now, now that you've I done, do that. So it's something you've already done so before? So that's it. So it wasn't nothing. That's why I kept going. You know, I've been in that position, getting out of that arm bar. I've done, done that before. Been there, been there, done that. So, you know, that's why I knew when I got in there, I was going to get out of it. Wasn't gonna tap. Knew there was never a doubt in my mind that I was getting out. Like as soon as it happened, I was like, "Shit, I'm not going out like that." As soon as it clicked right in my head. I was like, "My family's here. <laughs> I'm not tapping right here." I was like my mom's in right there. <laughs> How much perseverance does it take to get through some of those? The triangle looked deep. The arm bar looked deep. deep. The shit was deep. Like I got, I put myself all the way in there, and he got some long legs, so he he clapped it right in there. And that's what I was like, oh shit, I'm in here deep. Like, once I got in there, but um, I was like, all right. I kind of panicked for a second, then I was like, all right, come on, calm down, calm down. and get out of here. So, but um, I knew it was coming. I was like, all right. Once um, he had got me over, got that thing real good. Everybody thought it was broken. He thought it broke. So he was trying to tell the ref that it was broken. So I was like, no. I was like. All right, it's time to go. Cause I, when I felt it, I was like, all right, yeah, I got to get out of this thing. So that's when I started flipping. <laughs> I was like, all right, let me go. Got out of that thing. I was like, all right, just went the wrong way. It's what happens when you take the wrong turns. Like things could be easier, but you know, there was no tap. He heard a little pop. It was hot. Uh, I hyper extended it. That had to hurt. Uh. Not in the moment. Not in, not the, not the moment. Rush. Yeah, right in the moment. But after I got out, you know, I threw it right away. But after that, I was like, the second round, I was like, fuck, my arm is fucked. Like, I tried to go for a takedown against the cage, and I know I felt it. I was like, yeah, that, that left arm's done right now. So I was like, the whole time, I was like, all right, can't really do anything with this. But, like, a few times, I was like, I got to just throw it. Like, fuck it, I'm just throwing it anyway. Didn't have nothing on it, but I was like, I'm going to throw it. So I just <laughs> so that's why lot, all the pictures like this arm is so low and I'm just over here jabbing, just jabbing and throwing hooks and throwing kicks the whole time, you know it was a it was an adjustment just at this having to focus on that 
and not having my striking coach like you know Winks used my striking coach so um, just not having him and giving me ideas while I'm focused on my arm he could have been you know shooting me my codes would have made things a little bit easier last fight was the first fight with Greg in your corner who's who's going to be there this fight uh, Wink and Chad Wink and Chad this fight is there a bigger hunger now to get back in the win column you talked about it Amateur fights, the, the smoker fights, wins, cage fights, wins, started out with two professional wins, now there's been a loss. Yeah, of course, the fires, uh, the fires all never distinct, like, diminished or anything. I felt the exact same way. Uh, always think the sex that exact outcome is going to happen every time I go in there. So, same old thing to me. So, I'm going to go out there and do what I do. Um, not in hostile territory. <laughs> as long as I stay smart, um, I'll be fine. Because um, even with one arm, it took you know a split decision to to lose. You know after being in an arm bar the way I did, so I was like there is no quit. I never stop. So you gotta know that I'm coming, and not a lot of people have the heart to do that. <laughs> being in an atmosphere out there, Mississippi. You said your family wasn't too far away. What yeah, was that environment? Good. Like you had some people there for um, you. Yeah, was yeah, like? I had some um, family there, um, but it was you know a pro, a pro giver guy. Everybody there was for him. <laughs> how did that? How did that feel getting that experience? Had you had you felt um, that something of that magnitude? It wasn't really too big of a difference for me. The first time I fought here in New Mexico, I was boxing, amateur boxing. It was the first time I ever was booed, <laughs> like by everybody in the in the place. Like it was at the Cesar Chavez Convention Center, okay. And like everybody, they were all booing me when I got in the ring. Like <laughs> it, it'll it'll happen, especially with like, the other guys from there. Yeah, exactly. So I've never been booed that much. Like never. Like I was like, damn, everybody in here is booing me. So I was like, but as soon as I started beating them up, like. Those boos turned to odds, so, um, I don't know, after that, even after this last fight, everybody was trying to come see me. <laughs> so, still got a lot of positive feedback, oh, yeah, even when you took the yeah, loss. Yeah, because even, yeah, because everybody knows it, it could have gone either way. Like, you know, it is what it is, but, you know. We've talked a lot about that fight. Are you ready to move on to, fr to Friday night? Oh, yeah. I'm Put ready. that one in the past. Oh yeah, it's already been in the past. I, I said I didn't even watch the fight. I haven't, well, I haven't watched any of my fights really, other than like I've maybe seen, I've seen a couple of them. But you, you had know, some taken down from YouTube. Yeah, all of them got taken off of YouTube because I can't get a fight, <laughs> <laughs> and that was a part of the problem. People don't want to fight me. They see the videos and they're like, uh, I'm not fighting this dude. Like my manager had never even encountered that problem before. He was like, um. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I can't remember who it was, but I had like a flyweight a couple days ago tell me, he doesn't look that scary. It was an amateur flyweight. I was like, you know you're saying that. Thing. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what people always say. They're like, oh, yeah. Uh, I've seen him do stuff. I've seen him do stuff. And then when they get up close and they see me, like, uh, they're actually fighting as part of them. They're like, oh, shit, this is completely different like it's nothing like what I thought was going to happen like and then every fight's different because I'm always doing something different like this fight's going to be different y'all going to see a whole some different side of me is that what you were expecting to do yeah especially just I have so much like I would go nerves not really nerves like just anxiousness to fight because it takes six months to get a fight and I go through so many people bail and bail and bail and last minute, oh, I'm supposed to be fighting a week. Couldn't wait, doing everything, and people are cutting, like, dropping out a week out. You know what I'm saying? Like, doing all these multiple camps where I'm cutting weight, I'm getting ready to fight, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, and then they pull out. And then they try to get replacements. The replacements are like, no, I'm not fighting this guy. So it's like, I go through at least three opponents every fight and then don't even fight. <laughs> So do you have a different feeling of those I don't know, nerves almost? Just a different feeling than that anxiousness that normally is approaching? Yeah, because uh, I'm actually getting a quick turnaround. So it's not like, oh, it's, no, it's not too much of a buildup. Like, six months of, of waiting is a long-ass buildup. 
And this one feels like it came pretty quickly. Yeah, and I'm like, this. We already had had it. We were supposedly had it set up already. Then the guy I was originally supposed to fight pulled out. And then his replacement pulled out. And then his replacement pulled out. His replacement pulled out. Then we just got a guy yesterday, so. Have you found a funniest excuse yet that you've been told? Um... Like, too far? No. Is it the one one guy called the oh <laughs> this uh, guy? I think it was in uh, Phoenix. I think it was in Phoenix. Dude told the promoter, uh, "Why would you try to get me to fight him?" He's like, "I'm a local guy. I'm selling tickets. <laughs> I'm selling tickets. I'm, selling t- I'm a local guy. I'm selling tickets. Why? Why, why would you have me fight this guy?" Or um, a guy um, from New York agreed to fight me on one of the, uh, my second fight when I fought the dude from Florida. Yeah. I was originally supposed to, well, not originally, but there were, before he we got that dude, we were talking to this dude from New York, and he agreed to the fight, and then the next day called and said, oh, it was too far to travel. <laughs> You meant that New Mexico? That <laughs> oh, New Mexico. oh, no, no. I thought she said I needed my visa. <laughs> How do you demonstrate your new Chris Brown? What are some of the attributes? Just, Not the direct particulars, but some of the no, attributes just, you want to show off this uh, time. Just more of what I do in, in the gym. Um... And how much different <laughs> is Chris Brown in the gym from the guy that we've it's, seen? It's still funny because Wink's like... They don't see the what I really, really do because I still don't do. Well, what do we gotta do to unlock that? What I has to um, I was like, I I feel like I'm conservative <laughs> in my fights. <laughs> <laughs> it's honest. I'm like, I find, I feel like I'm, I'm a bit too conservative. <laughs> I think you could use I, some more combos. Uh, have you seen Have you seen me spar? <laughs> I think I've been there once or twice. Uh, see me like um, I don't know. I do a lot of wild stuff sparring, like the, but I'm a lot more calm in practice. It's just, uh, but it took a long time for me to get to that point. Even in practice, you know, being in there with all the you know guys that were in there with, so it's just really just fully translating, just being comfortable. I guess like I don't know. Well, we've already talked about it. you get excited. Yeah. When does that excitement start <laughs> come fight night? When, when when does this ball of nerves start jumping around? I'm always excited. I'm excited right now. You know, this fight week, like, you know, I'm I'm ready to fight. I've been ready to fight. <laughs> I'm just happy to fight and like to, it's just a blessing, you know, get to fight again and again. So I'm like, never got to do that before. Well, yeah, even as an amateur, it was hard to get fights. I would still go through three like after the first two amateur fights I had everybody else was like no I'm not fighting this guy I'm kind of worried that we're gonna jinx it we keep harping on this point that you're getting two fights in a row that's gonna take eight months I wouldn't, after I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if the dude didn't <laughs> if it didn't happen like and we're just like hey you know we finally got something like uh what that one time I was on King of the Cage and um I was at Smith's getting some orange juice and I get a call from the promoter talking about the guy pulled out talking about he didn't think he he wasn't pushed hard enough this camp he's not ready to fight Chris Brown <laughs> so like, so I've had it so I did the I did the weigh in by myself because they said they were going to try to find somebody I think uh, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. And I put, did the way it. I did the standoff by myself. <laughs> so still, even right now, after the press conference that we did today, you're still in your mind. You, you have in the back of your mind. There's a chance you may not be fighting Friday. I, I don't think negatively. I just, I always believe it's going to happen. I just, you know, when it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But I just go positive, ready to do it. I know what I need to do. I'm just ready to show up. I'm going to show up, make weight. Be ready to get it in. If they don't, it is what it is. It sucks. One split decision <laughs> loss doesn't stop Chris Brown from yeah. still being in the future. Yeah, it doesn't stop anything. Yeah, especially if anybody's seen the fight. Like if you've seen like just me getting out of that armbar, 
like shows I got the heart to do anything. Like, how many people you seen get out of an armbar like that? You talked about you've replayed the fight in your mind and you've only watched the clip that's up. Does it feel any different from the mind of watching it? What you went through as you're watching just that clip because that was the best part of his night. Yeah, no, I I knew what I was doing. I knew that I've, I've seen it in my head. I already knew what I did. I was like, all right, oh, I gotta go. <laughs> I was like, I've been there. It's it's nothing new. I've I've done that in practice. Just wondering. I talked to some other fighters. Didn't that take as much doctor, damage. Like, it's like watching a video game. I was doing that. <laughs> didn't take as much damage in practice. I got out of there smoother. But uh, I've been in that position. Like you know, I like to put myself in horrible positions in practice and get out of them. Because when I get in a fight, you never know where you're gonna end up. So something like that benefited you there at that last yeah, fight. So I was like, I knew I could get out of it. I was like, all right, it's not like oh shit, everybody's like, oh it's over, it's over. I was like, shit's not over. <laughs> like, I'm not done. Like, y'all think it's over? No. Like, watch, I'm about to get out of this. I was like, all right, yeah, it's time to go. Like, once he's like, oh, it's broken, it's broken. Look, like, nope. I'm about to get out of it right now. <laughs> and that's you trying to prove where you're at that 1% because you can't blame a lot of people for thinking that's over 90% of the time. You look back at that, that that's usually a wrap. One of those submissions. Mm -hmm, yeah, I was like, I seen that. it. I was like, dude, that shit look nasty. <laughs> I was like, ooh, that looked nasty. I was like, look at my arm. <laughs> they were like, yeah, look at that. I was like, I knew I was fine now. I was like, I was going to be all right. I was like, I can get up out this. I was like, I'll fight with one arm. I was like, fuck it. <laughs> we going. <laughs> I was like, I'm about to get out of here. <laughs> and we going to keep going. Was, was there a thought of ever quitting in your mind? Uh, you know, it, it goes right. It's like, oh, you could, you know, you when you start to doubt yourself, it's like, oh, you could take the easy way out and, and you know, and stop, like, no one will blame you for stopping right now if you, you just, you gave out. Like, fuck that. <laughs> I was like, nope. I was like, I was like, I'm not going out like that. Especially, like, ain't no way I'm getting finished. Like, I was like, fuck that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, there's, I was like, especially, I was like, I got out of this arm, I got out of that arm bar. I was like, I got one arm, I'll like, be fine. <laughs> I was like, we're going to get through this. I was like, let's take your time, just slow down, get your breath. Like, all right, we have to eat a couple punches, but then we're going to boom when, like, when it's time. So that's why, I, like, if you watch, like, I had the much heavier shots in that fight. Like, I was never rocked. You never heard me from his punches or nothing. Like, but, you know, he had the forward pressure or whatever, but. I was doing the most damage, for sure. What's the <laughs> message for everybody about Friday night? Uh, like always, you know it's going to be a hell of a fight. I always put on a great show. I steal the show every time. <laughs> and you know, out there just being breezy. <laughs> Chris Brown, thanks for joining me tonight. Thank you for having me.